Well, have you not written that flaming card yet, Vera? It takes any longer, you'd be better off asking the lad to fill it in. Well, I want it to be right, don't I? He's been really good to us, Tyrone, you know, helping out while you were ill and that. Aye, aye. aye. Hey, listen to this. Oh. A bouquet of congratulations mm. and may all your aspirations turn to dreams come true. <laughs> Happy birthday from Jack and Vera with love and thanks. Nobody could be more of a son to us than you are. That's beautiful, that thing. Yeah. Hey, up and check see you. Yes, yeah. Morning. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to morning. you. Happy see birthday. Ya. Me and our Jack's paid for the first lot of driving lessons. Oh, great. Oh, thanks, Jack. You're welcome, thanks, son. Thanks, Mrs D. Uh, well, aren't you going to open your card? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> thanks well, very much. Well, aren't you going to read it? <laughs> yeah. I just did. It's really nice, that. And not read it properly. <laughs> I just did. I've got to go to work now. Thanks, so. See you. Yeah, but... Thanks again. There you go. <laughs> And a very festive choice, if I may say so. Thank you, Norris. And will uh, Santa be wrapping something exciting in those for your two little girls? A couple of games. They'll probably play with them all the way through to Boxing Day night, if I'm lucky. Then I might as well hand them over to Emily Bishop for the Friends of the Weatherfield Hospital charity shop. Oh, well, take a tip from me, Mrs Webster. Don't dispose of any of your daughter's toys and keep the boxes in a safe place. What? Well, as an investment, in good condition and in their original packaging, I mean, they could become the collectibles of the future. I mean, they fetch a very good price. I've got a yellow submarine, you know. Sounds colourful. As in the Beatles song. It's worth £150. For a toy? In pristine condition, yes. And I've still got my collection of die-cast model cars from when I was a boy, all in mint condition and in the boxes. But surely, as a boy, you wouldn't have known they were going to be worth much. Oh, no, 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 no of course not. It's just one of the benefits from having been a very careful child. I see. Morning, all. <laughs> oh, Rita, are you feeling better? <gasps> Fit as a flea. Oh, are, are you sure, Rita? I mean, influenza can be very debilitating. I mean, you don't want to overexert yourself. Oh, believe me, Norris, right now, the only thing I intend to overexert is that box of tea bags in the back. <laughs> right. I'll put the kettle on then. <laughs> Thank you. It's been looking after you, all right? Norris, yeah. Lovely paper, good advice on the investment. What more do I want coming to my local news agents? See you later. Ta da, love. Right, kettle's on. Oh, thank you. So, no problems then? No, no, I, I think you'll find everything in perfect order. Oh, I am pleased to hear that. I, uh, I have, however, made some notes. <laughs> notes? Well, observations, really, you know. Uh, oh. Suggestions based on my experience in the extended retail arena, as it were. Ideas for maximising turnover and utilising sales space more effectively, that, that, that kind of thing. Oh, I see. Oh, no, please, Rita, please don't take these in any way as a criticism. Uh, think of them more as, uh, well, a sharing of experience, you know, a meeting of minds of commerce, as it were. Uh, anyway, perhaps you'd like to have a look at them when you have a moment. Yes, I will, Norris. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll... See if that kettle's boiled. <laughs> oh, Vera, you're not still fretting over Tyrone and that card, are you? Oh, I don't know, Jack. Do you think I went too far with what I wrote? You know, saying he was like a second son. Well, maybe you were a little embarrassed, that's all. Well, we shot out of that door. You'd have thought I'd put a curse on him. Well, maybe there was more to it than that. I mean, he has got a mother of his own and a father, yet you don't see out round here from them, do you? I mean, 17th birthday and not even a flaming phone call. Well, that Jackie Dobbs. Mm. All she cared about was getting in folks' houses mm. or in men's trousers. Well, there you are, then. Oh, I don't know, Jack. I keep thinking there's got to be somewhere else. Thanks. She's no right saying things like that to me. Yeah, well, Leanne's never exactly been the sort to respect other people's feelings, has she? Well, this time she's gone too far. You didn't hear her treating me like so much she'd trod it. Yeah, well, OK, but you can't let it eat away at you like battery acid. Rise above it. Ignore what you mean. Well, what else are you going to do? I mean, look, kickboxing and an apology out of her's not going to solve anything, and you don't build bridges when there's cannibals on the other side of a river. 
let us stew for a bit. In other words, let it blow over. It's a pacifist's way. He announces this hotel to me and the kids without a word of warning. What did Kevin say? Well, exactly. I mean, it's simple as a cake mix for Danny, but they're Kevin's kids. He wants to see them over Christmas. He just didn't think that's all. And I suppose his heart's in the right place. Yeah, I dare say, Gil, but he's got to realise it isn't just me and the kids he's taking on. I mean, there's the dad as well. Anyway, how are you and Martin? I'm going out on the town tonight. Oh, are you? Well, the hospital Christmas do, anyway. Well, it'll do you good. It'll do you both good. Yeah, I think we're managing to put things back together again. Good night out won't do us any harm, will it? Christmas puddings are in the next aisle. Actually, we've got a very good deal on our own luxury brand. Oh, thank you very much. Well done, Nita. Sorry? I'm just glad to see that after all that uh, that business with James, that it hasn't dampened your enthusiasm for the job. Everybody gets turned down for a job sometime, don't they, Curly? Yes, yes, you're right. And you mustn't take it personally. Although, in your case, I can see why you might. Look, however I'm taking it, I won't let it interfere with my job, all right? Right, yeah. I'm just trying to reassure you. And that, uh, well, I mean, despite that business with James, I'm sure that a girl of your talents can still climb the fresco corporate ladder. Well, it's very nice to know. I'll bear it in mind. And you must remember, my door is always open. Always. And if there's anything that you want to discuss away from here... I get it. What? Well, I've got a reputation for it now, haven't I? Sorry, I don't understand. Curly, whatever happened between me and James was a mistake, all right? One that's not going to happen again, and certainly not with the likes of you. Well, here's a couple of thirsty lads. What can I get you? Uh, two pints, two hot pots, please, Nestle. Coming up. Leanne goes a couple of hot pots, will you? I'll get these, Kev. Oh, cheers, Jim. Um, Kev, can I have a word? Everything's OK, isn't it? It depends on what you say. Want you drink, you two? Yeah. I'll have another lager, seeing as you're offering. Hey, you hey. She doesn't accept drinks off just any bloke. Well, I sincerely hope not. Me, though, I'm not too fussy. No. I'll have a pint, love. Right. Please, no, Yeah. What? All over Christmas? Well, with that for New Year... Big deal. I wanted to see my kids Christmas morning, watch them open the presents. Danny didn't mean anything, but... No, you're right, it wouldn't be fair on you. Yeah. And it wouldn't be fair on Rosie and Sophie if I said you couldn't go. So, you better go, aren't you? You sure? You're not going to change your mind? Trust me. I'm not going to. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, Jez, it's me. Leanne, listen, um, are you going to be about later? Cos uh, I could do with seeing you, you know. Yeah, uh, ten o'clock. Come round the back. See ya. Running the place yourself, then, eh? Yeah, Kevin and Jim have gone for lunch. All oh, right, right. I just thought I'd pop round and see how the birthday boy was, you know. Fine. Only how Vera, she's got it into her head that there's something wrong, you know. You've got something on your mind, like. No. No. Only well, the way you went out of the house this morning was a bit abrupt, she sees. I mean, if there is something wrong, son, you can always talk to us. You do know that, don't you? No, I'm sorry, Jack, I can't chat. I mean, this guy's coming back for his car in half an hour, and if I don't have it done, Kev will have my guts hanging on Christmas tree. Aye, right. Right, son. So he as good as told you you had this job, did I? Oh, I don't know, Linda. I just thought that... You had a special understanding? If you like, yeah. And now you're feeling used and abused? I feel dirty. 
Sounds to me that's how you got yourself into this in first place. I don't even know why I'm bothering trying to talk to you. Oh, calm down. I didn't mean out. Just trying to cheer you up, that's all. Yeah, well, you can't, all right? So don't even bother trying. I'm sorry, Linda, but this has hurt me. I mean, I don't want everybody thinking that the door to my bedroom is open to anyone with a job offer. Don't talk wet. Nobody's going to think that. Aren't they? What about Curly, eh? He's already fancying his chances. Nita, you can handle Curly. Yes, but I don't want to have to. I used to have a reputation for being good at the job. Not on it. Well, if you ask me, Kev, <laughs> you've done the decent thing letting Sally have the children. Yeah, suppose it was just selfish wanting them here for Christmas. No, it wasn't. It's perfectly natural. Uh, maybe. I just get out thinking what a great Christmas it's going to be without them. No girlfriend, no kids. May as well tear it off the calendar now. Right. Let's see how tired Owen's getting on with that radiator. Nice to see you there. Oh dear, too much salt, is it? In an open wound, I'm afraid. Thanks for drink. All right. Do you fancy another? Well, you're a hard woman to refuse, Gwen. Janice has gone home to get Les's dinner on. Oh. That's one thing you can say about an army man. He knows how to look after himself. Oh, he certainly does that. I bet you're a good cook. I do the best pasta of Western Naples. Ooh, is that limitation? Well, I, yeah, I suppose it is. I right, whenever you want. Well, what about tonight? Fine. If you take my advice, you'll forget all about it. It's not like you've done out criminal, is it? So you slept with a bloke who you thought could give you a promotion. Hey, that wasn't why I slept with him. It's what sex was made for, if you ask me. Giving us power over blocks. You ask any woman who's been married a fortnight past her honeymoon. It's part of nature. Like a spider spinning its web. Trouble with you is, Nita, you haven't had enough practice. What do you mean? Think of sex like your savings. Be careful what you spend it on. <laughs> So what is it, Toya? What's what? Oh, come on. I'm going out tonight and you're hardly putting me in the party mood, are you? Got a face as long as a tombstone all day. Or is it? Is it Spider? No, me and Spider are fine. It's Leanne. She's been saying some right nasty things. Oh, tell me news, not history. No, we've fallen out before, but never like this. Well, what's she been saying? She reckons I'm stuck up. But since I passed me exams, I reckon I'm too good for everyone else. Sounds to me like she's jealous. Well, I'm glad that's over. Ambushed. I told you to be careful. You want to go and put your feet up, Rita? Nonsense. What I want is a vodka and tonic. Oh. Hey, come in. What, to the Rovers? My treat. Just to say thank you for everything you did for me this last week. Oh, well, thanks, Rita. Yeah, I'd be delighted. <laughs> now let's see how we get on working together. So, so you consider keeping me on? Norris, there's not a lot of space behind that counter. And if one of us takes a dislike to each other, we're both within strangling distance. Like I say, let's see how we get on next couple of weeks, side by side. Uh, just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll surprise you. Can you sit over there. <laughs> Hiya. I'll have uh, a pint of bitter, please, mate, and uh, rum and coke. Hello, Martin. Hi, oh, Rebecca. I wasn't sure whether you'd be here or not. Yeah, uh, well, Jerry wouldn't miss the chance of a drink. No? Nice things? Don't ask. All right. I'm sorry. It's doing me head in, Martin. You know, all we ever do is argue. I don't know why we just don't call it a day. Rebecca? I thought you'd left me. Jerry, this is, this is Martin. Martin, this is my husband. Martin! I've heard Rebecca on about you. Nothing too bad, I hope. Oh, and you don't have a bad word to say against anyone, do you, love? Except me, I suppose. <laughs> what are you drinking, Martin? No, no, these two are mine, mate. Erm, uh, can I get you one? No, no, fine, thanks. Where are you sitting? Over there. Well, we'll come and join you then, if that's all right. OK, it's all right. Uh, Gail, this is Rebecca, who I work with, and Jerry, her husband. Yeah. Pleased to meet you at last. Hi, Lord. Right, your boy. Hi, Gwen. How are you? Hi. Come in. I'm fine. Good. <laughs> 
Something smells good. Ah, well, no supermarket sauces in here, Gwen, let me tell you. When you eat with me, you get the real things, so you do. Well, I'm impressed. Look, I brought these to help you down. Oh, that'll do nicely. I'll just get a couple of glasses. Oh, there's no need. No. I like to do things properly. Yeah, I can see that, Jim. There you are. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. What the hell, eh? <laughs> it's not like Tyrone to be late. Will you give over fretting? He's probably going to see his mate Marcus. They'll have gone to the flicks or something. See, there he is now. Where have you been? We've been worried sick. Sorry, Vera. I've just been walking. Walking? Where? Nowhere. Look, I'm going to have to go and check on Monica. Look, but I've made you a special birthday tea. It's steak and kidney pudding with chips. And loads of gravy. Look, I'm sorry, Vera. Will it keep? I'm not really hungry. So what do you do, Jerry? IT. Information technology. Oh, so you know all about the Millennium Bug, then? I had a quid for every time someone said that to me. Jerry! What? Gil was only making conversation. There's no need to be rude. I wasn't. You didn't think I was being rude, did you? No, no, of course not. See? Too sensitive. That's Rebecca's trouble. You noticed that, have you, Martin? Well, not especially, no. Glad I'm not one of your patients, mate. You wouldn't spot it if they'd been dead for a week. Oh, <laughs> Jerry! That's her other trouble. No sense of humour. I'll bet she's not much of a joker in the canteen, is she? Yeah, well, the only joke around here is you. Oh, that's sharp. Biting satire. You ought to have your own stand-up show. Right. Come on. I've had enough of this. Too right. I need another drink. I'm really sorry. He's probably just had too much to drink. Yeah. There's hope for us, yeah? You mind turning that off, I'd like a word. So, oh. I'm sorry about Vera's tea. Was she that upset? Oh, she'll get over it. Not what she's worrying about. What we are both worried about is you. It's now. So there is something. Hi. What is it? Something to do with your mum and not hearing from her? No. She never used to remember my birthday when I was living with her. No way she'd remember now. So you're going to tell me? It's now new. I've managed with it for years. It's just today, I suppose, I've realised the trouble I'm in. Trouble, lad? What sort of trouble? Well, I've always loved cars, yeah? And I couldn't wait for my 17th birthday so I could learn to drive. Only it's never going to happen, is it? I don't follow you, son. Why not? Well, it's not the same as it used to be, is it? Just get in a car and go. There's a written test now. And, well, I can't really read. To be honest, I can hardly read or write at all. Uh, uh, might I inquire if you've had a chance to look over my suggestions for the cabin yet? No, I haven't yet, Norris, no. I think I find them quite exciting, mm. in terms of moving the business along. Where to exactly? I mean, it's quite convenient where it is. No, no, in terms of product and service, you see. Well, I think you should seriously consider opening a sub-post office. Yeah. I mean, at the moment, people have got to go all the way to Maudsley <laughs> Street to get the stamp and, and some pension, and, and just think of the extra trade that would generate. Do you know, you might have something there, Norris. And, and then there's dry cleaning and photocopying and video... Hey, hang on a minute, Norris. I need another drink before we get into that. Uh, Natalie, uh, can I have another vodka and tonic and... Oh, oh just half a bitter, please. Just give me two ticks. Natalie, is it all right if I take my break now? <laughs> yeah, I don't see why not. Cheers. So, on for Christmas, then? Yeah, we're on, but it's dead tough on Kevin. You could have said no and I wouldn't have blamed him. Yeah, but you didn't. All I'm saying, Danny, is surprises are lovely, but just give him a bit more thought in future. Yeah, all right.
What are you doing here? I've had enough of the pacifist way. Mm. Can I see Leanne? Yeah, if you're quick. She's taking a break in the back. Thanks. Mm. Thanks for coming over. No problem. Might have slipped round front for a pint after. a bit early. No, Rebecca's husband is just about spoiled the party atmosphere for me anyway. At least we don't choose an audience for our rouse. It's a shame. Yeah, I know. Look, I'm sorry I was so stupid. She seems really nice. Yeah, she is. I'll get my coat. OK. What's all this about? Martin, it's just one row after another. I mean, I don't know how much more I can put up with it. I mean, you've seen what he's like. I have to put up with that all the time. Oh, I know. I'd have loved to have punched his lights out for him. Yeah, well, thanks for the thought, but I don't think it would have done much good. And anyway, you know, you've, you've done enough just listening to me go on and on. Well, I'm always here. You know that. Thanks, Martin. Off the red. Leanne, cocaine's dangerous. Oh, listen to Granny Battersby. You're a fine one to talk shacked up with that dope head. That's different. And Spider's not a dope head. Ah, so he's just a dope then. Oh, you're a fine one to talk shoving that stuff up your nose. What do you think it makes you look cool? Look, you're nothing to me. You're not even my proper sister. So do you think I really give a monkey's about what you think? What the hell is going on in here? It sounds like a flaming punch up in a brothel from out front. Oh, it's all right, Nally. I'm going. And you can tell yourself for all I can. 